All right. Well, welcome. I'm super excited. It is the beginning of the year and so many things are, you know, I think I get excited in the beginning of the year. It's like the beginning of a day, beginning of a week, and then you get this big explosion of the beginning of a year. It's kind of like a fresh start. And I know for me, I get super focused on what do I want to achieve? Not by always looking back to what I haven't achieved. I look back to reflect on what it was accomplished and what might I do different this year? What might I add to my list and where do I want to go? And so I um, wanted to bring Rob on and share with you. He's been in this, in the industry, had phenomenal success and he is now coaching. He sees a lot of things and he sees, he's seen so many new years and what we focus on. And, you know, one thing that I was thinking about was how many people get so excited this time of year, this first year, and within three weeks to five weeks, they go from sprinting to walking to stalled, like completely shut down. And that's something I, I want to help you guys all overcome and not have happen in your business, whatever business that is. And so whether it's a health and wellness goal that you have, or it's your business goals, I see it in the health and fitness world where they go. And then literally the gyms used to be so packed, Rob, right? Like right now, I don't even want to go to a gym because they're so packed. But by February, it's like, ah, oh, it's our normal peeps again. It's us. It's the fam. Um, and those that just don't, don't set those realistic, achievable stepping stone goals end up leaving, quitting, giving up on themselves. It's too hard. So I'm excited for you guys to hear from Rob. And so Rob, there's some people on here that might not actually know who you are. So I'd love for you to intro and um, we'll get started. Okay. I like long walks on the beach during sunset times. Um, I love seeing late night movies after hard work with my wife and just dinner and a movie and hanging out and escaping from my kids. My favorite time is in the morning when my kids wake up and at night when they go to bed and I don't have to see them anymore. Just being real, right? Two favorite times. It's like, yes, love you. Um, been in the industry now for over a decade. But prior to this industry, I was actually a tennis guy. I grew up playing t tennis, traveling all around the country, played semi-professional tennis, played college tennis, then taught tennis, then ran a tennis club. And that's really what I thought I was going to do. I thought I was going to build a tennis club and had all these big aspirations. And I was crazy entrepreneurial. And even when I'm at school, I'm like, you know, in college, I'm like writing down all my ideas of businesses and how I could make a tennis club work. And then I got involved in the network marketing industry. Long story short, I became the, the top recruiter out of a million distributors. And I tell everyone that's because I had an incredible mentor. I was crazy coachable in large part because I knew I wasn't naturally the person who was going to start out like really, really good. And then I outworked everybody. Um, I'm, most people don't know my background, even people that, that kind of know me. But I was always the shortest, and now I'm now I'm six one, or at least I like to think six one, maybe on my tippy toes. But I um I grew really really late, and so at one point in my life, I had my I was fourteen, my twelve year old brother was taller than me, my ten year old sister was taller than me, so I kind of was always a little guy that like had to fight for everything, and um, that's why I outworked everyone because I was so scared of failing that I just went all out crazy. And so that was a great experience. Um, from there, I had a, a company that had done about $4 billion in sales that wanted to create a new brand. Uh, and so I helped create that. I was both consultant for that company creator and also I became the lead distributor. And so I did that for several years. And then long story short, I created a, a merger with that company and, and, and really two others. It was like three brands, companies merging. And the last couple of years I've just done consulting speaking and coaching all over uh, 2018 which is still weird to say it's 2019 was fun I think last year I think I spoke in nine different countries travel all over and got to know a lot of new people and um, it was fun hanging out with with you and in Mexico and and uh, we all learned a ton from each other so excited to share any insights, any perspective, just to give you an idea of, for me, like I go over and think of things because we're talking about what to train on and stuff. So here's my, my wife hates because I do chicken scratch all over. 
So this is my training right here. It's, I found an envelope. I don't say envelope, I say envelope. That's the correct way. And that's my training. So I've got it all ready to go. So awesome. any, any direction oh you wanna go is good. That's just, like me, I write things down. Like I have little sticky notes all over the place. <laughs> I love it. So, um, so yeah, so thanks for having me on and I'm excited. I know it's a new year. A new year is just an excuse. And sometimes those excuses can be really helpful because it's just a psychological excuse to have that psychological fresh start. Cause we know in reality we can start whenever, but sometimes we just, we just need that. And I think, yeah, I think that helps us to have that. So I've, I've got a lot of thoughts and ideas and you know, there's lots of different directions and there's always different ways of defining success or insights or perspectives or secrets or hacks or whatever we want to call them. And so we'll have some fun and I want to shed some light and give you all some perspective and help you to crush 2019 and make it happen. Awesome. 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 Well, I'm super excited. So I'm just going to let you roll and I may have some questions interjecting if that's cool, but I'll just roll with new year, fresh start and mindset. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. So the first thing I was thinking about, and I was thinking about just some of these trainings we, we had talked about and gone into, and I was actually referring to some of my notes from, from Mexico, from all of you and from me. And the first thing I was thinking about is, is, is one of the best analogies I can give that I've given for, I haven't given it very often, um, but I've probably only given it on maybe two Facebook Lives, is the shadow analogy. And the shadow analogy, especially since it's 2019, is this. Look at the, imagine the sun, envision the sun. And when you're walking towards the sun, that represents progress. And your shadow is behind you. Your shadow could be your mistakes. Your shadow could be that guilt. That, the shadow could be the shame that you, that you have for not chasing the dreams that you felt like you should have or not taking the action that you, you said that you were going to take, or it could represent anything in your life. If, if we're not even talking about network marketing, it could be as a parent or as a spouse or anything you want to, but for, let's talk specifically about business right now. So all of that is behind you, but only when you're taking steps forward, only when you're headed in the right direction. That's why direction is so key because I believe the best definition of happiness is progress. Think about this. When you're progressing, you're happy. doesn't matter how much money you're making or lack thereof. When you're progressing, you're so happy. That's why you see some people that make millions upon millions and they're just bummed out of their minds, right? They're so discouraged and just depressed because they stop progressing because they look at success as a destination. When in reality, those of us that have had success know that it's actually a journey. It is not a destination. There's a reason why most billionaires don't retire. It's because, and we think all the time, like, what are, what are they doing? Why are they retired? Like, I mean, why isn't Mark Zuckerberg retired? Why, why is, you know, Bill Gates, yeah, what he's doing now. But I mean, you look at what all of these different legends were doing. Why wasn't Steve Jobs retired, you know, at the end of his life? He just kept working. And so it's important to understand that, under, understand the shadow analogy. You know what happens when we turn away from the sun? All of a sudden, your shadow consumes you. All of a sudden, your doubts consume you. All of a sudden, you begin to doubt yourself. You begin to doubt your abilities. You begin to doubt your team. You begin to doubt your company. You begin to doubt everything. And you lose sight of progress. You lose sight of taking the next step. You lose sight of what it really takes to have success. Now, again, these are deeper principles. The business behind the business in network marketing, that's what it is. It's deeper. It's principles that we apply to network marketing, but they actually help us in everything and in all aspects of life. So as we take that principles, there are a couple key words that I wrote down. They were asked separately, two of, two of the most successful people. They were asked separately, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates of what it takes to be successful. And I'm sure they've had many different answers at different times, just as we all would if someone says, hey, what does it take to be successful? And one of the things that they said, both of them separately, is that it takes focus. Focus. And I've thought about that word a lot. It takes focus. Now, what is focus? Too many times, if we're going back to the shadow analogy, is either you're growing or you're dying. 
you can't be progressing right one way and then say all of a sudden, you know, oh, I'm going the other way. It's like either we're going forwards or we're going backwards. And so we need to become, be, we need to be more focused and less well-rounded. And I know a lot of times it's not what we hear, but we need to become great at the things we're focused on instead of just becoming average at everything. And so for all of you, you need to start to get that brain trained and retrained to be more focused and to start to create the solutions to help you to have success. And some of you are in different points. Some of you in your business right now are just absolutely crushing. It's the best, best year you've ever had. For others of you, you're getting your butt kicked. It's just everybody's at different ebbs and flows in their business. But the problem is, is a lot of us turn away from that sun when we get our butts kicked. And what happens is the focus shifts on everything that's wrong. And when the focus shifts on everything that's wrong, you're going to find it. And all of a sudden, you're going you're gonna to find everything that's wrong with maybe your particular area or your particular circle of influence of friends. Or maybe you're going to find issues you have with your company. Look, I've consulted for so many different companies, and every single time I go in, and I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how big, how long they've been around, how great everything looks from the outside, every single one has their own set of issues. It's just it's part of reality. Like It's just part of reality and I know your company I know you have an incredible company but what happens is as soon as we shift that focus now our brains are fixated on problems rather than solutions and so what do you find more of where attention goes energy flows and results show so now all of a sudden you're gonna find more problems right rather than more solutions now your brain is working against you rather than for you. Now all of a sudden the doubts become bigger. The problems become amplified and bigger rather than focusing on those specific solutions to help you to have success. And so one of the things that go and everything kind of works together is you need to you need to look for those solutions in the way that I would describe it from from a tennis perspective. So for me growing up playing tennis, semi professional tennis coaching people in network marketing, coaching people in tennis. Most people don't know, but I coached a high school tennis team for about 15 years. I never got paid even a dollar. And then this last year was the first year that I didn't do it. And Natasha knows I'm like crazy, quiet, competitive. And I think we took the state championship. We took it 11 out of 15 years, um, which was no one had ever even come close to that. I mean, four out of 15 years and it's because what we did is is we we used all these principles we're talking about on focus and so I would teach the tennis players of whenever I was playing tennis I found myself having a battle if it was this if it was a match that was winnable of course you're playing someone that's 10 levels above you and you don't have a shot that's different but if it was a winnable match and I'm playing it was this battle was my brain fixated on the problems and excuses was I creating my alibi or was I creating my success story? Was I creating my alibi why to tell mommy and daddy and my friends and my coach why I lost because I'm injured or I'm tired or you know my tennis strings you know were looser than they were supposed to be or because it was windy or because the other kid just got lucky or the other kid was a bad matchup for me. I mean, think these are all real things that I mean you could give those. They could they could be legit excuses, but they don't help. They don't help. So I had to learn that successful people take responsibility. When you reach that height of maturity, you take 100% responsibility. Why? Because even if, it, even if it's something that's 100% legitimate, it doesn't help to give that, that excuse credit. It doesn't help to give that excuse that much value, right? You're feeding it. You're feeding the excuse beast which feeds your fears, which feeds your doubts. And then eventually that little teeny critter becomes a real monster to you. It does, it becomes a real monster to you. So now all of a sudden it's like, you've created your own reality. So I went in and when I started network marketing, I was part of a company that had been around for 30 years, very old school compensation plan. It wouldn't be considered up to date, uh, very expensive, products 
like very, very, I mean, great products, but still they were overpriced. I'm starting in Utah where the company's headquarters is in the most saturated market in the entire world. Everybody says, hey, people don't like network marketing in my area. Trust me, I know, because when I went to Asia, they told me that. And when I went to South America, they told me that. When I went to Central America, they told me that. When I went to Australia, they told me that. When I went to Europe, they told me that. When I went to Canada, they told me that. So I'm sure you say the same thing because everyone thinks their area is different, okay? But we all know Utah is the most saturated place in the world. So the excuses were there, right? The alibi was there. But instead, I focused on, okay, what are the solutions for me to win? And I would always say, okay, look, either I'm in or I'm out. And that's why I always say the hardest person you're ever going to have to recruit is the most important person. That's yourself. Recruit yourself. There's nobody else. And you may say, yeah, but I don't need money. That's true. But if you've recruited yourself, other things will fall into place. The other important things, that's the foundational piece. How do you expect to find solutions? How do you expect to look somebody in the eyes or you be on a Zoom or have them like, right? They're looking you eye to eye on a Zoom and you're saying, come follow me. Whether you use those words or not, that's what you're saying. When you don't even know if you're going to be around two months, three months, six months, or a year from now. So the first thing I had to do was I had to recruit myself. I had to focus and I had to commit. Your success in large part will be determined by the level of your commitment. And so at the beginning, we can say we're committed, but you can't be 100% committed. You just can't until you get your butt kicked, right? Until you have that cold water just thrown on you and you're just like, okay, am I in or am I out? And each trial can strengthen your commitment or weaken it. But you don't know. You can say, but you don't really know. And so for me, I thought I'm a very committed, loyal person. I pride myself on being tough. I thought I'm all in. I am all in. And then my fifth month in the business came. And that happened to be a month that was December for me. Okay, now I know some companies crush it, some teams crush it in December. I made less than $400. And I worked 80 hours a week. And that was my only source of income because like an idiot, I quit my job way too soon. I didn't know the difference between bonus checks and residual income. And so I don't know what to do. Am I supposed to laugh at my check? Am I supposed to cry at my check? And so I had to decide. And I decided that I was, I was all in. And I said, look, either I'm in or I'm out. Either I'm, all, I'm sick of dipping my, to, my toe in the pool and telling everyone I'm in. Either I jump in the freaking pool or I don't. But dipping my toe in the pool isn't going to work. This is my family that's on the line. And so I jumped in. And at the beginning, the pool was a little bit cold. And it took time to get used to the water. And then I got used to it and I invited other friends to come, right? And I showed them the way and I showed them that it was worth it to jump in. And even though it would be a little bit cold at first, it was totally worth it and it'd be relaxing and they could come hang out. But it started with recruiting myself. It started with committing. It started with, as I call, putting the blinders on and focusing on the solutions. It started with, right, with taking 100% responsibility. It started with me not wishing that it were easier, as Jim Rohn says, but wishing that I were better. Now, don't get me wrong. There were still times where I absolutely got my butt kicked. There were still times where, you know, I worked my butt off, even though I three and a half times my volume the next month in January and it never dipped below that. There were still times where it was like I was plateaued and I was stuck. And I no longer questioned if it was going to happen, but I questioned when it was going to happen. But that's the difference. I knew it was going to happen. I knew I was going to be around two, three, four, five, six years from that time. So that part was done so that my brain stopped wasting, wasting energy and power on anything else. It didn't matter to me. It didn't matter at that point. It didn't matter if my million dollar mentor who signed me up in the business, it didn't matter if he quit the business. It didn't really matter. Because I had made a commitment. It didn't matter if my superstar downline person that I signed up quit the business and said, hey, I'm going to go do this. It didn't matter that my family members, which happened, decided that network marketing wasn't for them. It didn't matter. Now, did it hurt? Oh, yeah. It was like somebody took a knife and stabbed me. But it didn't matter in the sense it didn't waver if I was going to do it or not. And so that's why for me, 2019, it's going to be 
It's up to you. You've got to take that 100% responsibility. You've got, to, you've got to strengthen that resolve and that commitment. You've got to really have that conversation with yourself. And what I say to people is, listen to yourself less, talk to yourself more. Listen to others more and talk less. But yourself, sometimes our mind's a little bit naturally negative, right? And we start just, it's, it's, a, it's a mechanism to protect us is what it thinks, right? It's a natural mechanism to protect us from any pain. But we know that's where the growth comes from. So I like to say, listen to yourself less, talk to yourself more until your thoughts start to become those crazy solution-oriented positive thoughts. And when that happens, then great. That's next level. That's when it's like, okay, great. Now I've got this brain that's just working for me and I love it and I love it. But most of us aren't to that point when we start. And so for all of you, all this stuff's great but it doesn't matter unless you actually go take action. It doesn't matter until you actually go create that strong commitment. It doesn't matter until, I mean, I know you, you all have a lot of trainings and different things. It's how many of you have actually written down what your definiteness of purpose is or your mission statement. How many actually read it on a regular basis? I had it in my office where I would see it. I had it in my shower. I had it pop up. I know Natasha has specific quotes and different things and alarms that go off where she reads it. She's big. She understands the power of affirmations and quotes and different things. But how many of you are actually doing that? I needed to be reminded. And sometimes I'd add little different things just so that, you know, it wasn't just like just the same repetitive type stuff. Um, and so, and I would read it out loud because there's power in that. But how many of you are actually doing that? How many of you have set, you know, how many new contacts are you really going to make? You can say, okay, I want to go crush 2019, but what, how many are you going to make? I mean, how many new contacts are you going to make? How many third party validations are you going to do? Right? What, what are you going to do? Because just wanting it and just needing it isn't enough. You actually have to take the action so that you deserve it, not just want it and need it. Wanting and needing is good, but deserving it is great. And how do we deserve it? It takes that consistent access action where you can get to the point where you truly marry the process and you divorce the result. And it no longer becomes a question of if. It's not if, but when. It's not if, but when. And when you can get to that point, I'm not saying it's easy, but at least you've made the hardest decision now where now you can, you can really get solution oriented as you go. And so I, I'm just excited. And this is something you can apply any day, any month any time of the year, but this is a, it's a psychological excuse for you right now just to say, you know what? Maybe I'm not where I want to be. Maybe last year, what I didn't do what I wanted to do. So what? That shadow's behind you if you're heading in the right direction. Use everything to help you. Everything. And maybe you crushed it last year and you say, I just want to go to the next level. Wherever it is that you are right now, if you want to go to the next level, now it's, okay, what do I need to do to take it to the next level? So I know that that's, um, that's a lot of talking, so I'll stop for a second and then go over anything else <laughs> any questions. No, it was, it's perfect because those are things that, you know, as entrepreneur and how focused I get, I have a mission statement. I have my I am statements. I have my alarms that go crazy on my phone all day long. I have alarms now on my watch because it'll vibrate. I'm like, oh, okay, yes, refocus. Because um, when you're in this, you you get so so many distractions, right? Your inbox is blowing up, and then you have all this stuff here you want to get done on your desk. You have this you want to write, this post that you need to get done. And I get how people get paralyzed, right? They, there's so much that they just stop. They they paralyze themselves because they they don't focus. They don't shut that stuff off and refocus. So I absolutely love it. Um, I'm, there was a couple things here. So um, yes, David, I will share with you guys. I have, I'll screenshot my uh, mission statement to you guys. Um, it changes. I personally review it every quarter because I feel my core stays the same but sometimes that mission statement slightly changes depending on where my focus is and what I'm doing. So every quarter I reevaluate me, my goals and where I'm going. Yeah, I love that. And I want to read something real quick and then any questions you guys have would be great. So I found this from John Maxwell and this is, um, 
really powerful when I talk about becoming a leader and he just puts it so just perfectly. And so this is one of the trainings I do for my leader of leaders trainings that I'll share with all of you that, that I wrote down from him. He says, leaders who attract followers need to be needed. So pay really close attention because the, every word means something. Lead, so he, he talks, everything is about, he starts out everything with leaders who attract followers. And then the next part is leaders who develop leaders. Okay. So leaders who attract followers need to be needed. Leaders who develop leaders want to be succeeded. Leaders who attract followers develop the bottom 20%. Leaders who develop leaders develop the top 20%. Leaders who attract followers focus on weakness. Leaders who develop leaders focus on strengths. Leaders who attract followers treat everyone the same. I thought this was interesting. Leaders who develop leaders treat individuals differently. Leaders who attract followers spend time with others. Leaders who develop leaders invest time in others. Leaders who attract followers grow by addition. Leaders who develop leaders grow by multiplication. Leaders who attract followers impact only people they touch. Leaders who develop leaders impact people beyond their reach. And then he says this, the challenge of leading leaders is number one, leaders are hard to find. Number two, leaders are hard to gather because they're entrepreneurs and they want their own way. They want flexibility. They want to think outside the box. And three, he says, leaders are hard to keep. And I think that, you know, these are just incredible, incredible. Yeah. And I'll actually, just before I forget I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this right now on Facebook Messenger to Natasha. Done. Sent already. So she can have that screenshot and she can share it with all you in the group. But I just think it's important as we go because this is a world where we're so focused on instant gratification. And in reality, if you put this in perspective, this business is instant gratification. And what do I mean by that? Let's say it took you four years. What else could you do that four years from now you never have to work another day in your life? I'm not making any guarantees, but what else could you do? But most people can't think in those terms. Four years? And most people during those four years are fake working. And I know that that's, that's really just tough love, but they're fake working. They're doing the personal development, which is important. They're doing all the things that are good but they're avoiding the highest income producing activities, which is talking to brand new people about your business. Everything else is good. But if you don't talk to brand new people, nothing else matters. That's the, that's the fire. Everything else is the fuel the, your comp plan that pays out 72.9 ways and your products and all their secret ingredients, right? And the founders and how incredible they are and knowing all their families. That's great. That's the fuel, but you're throwing fuel on dirt. If you're not talking to brand new people and everyone's like, oh, check, 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 19 things done today. At the end of the week, Natasha's like, how many new people you talk to? Hmm, one. So I'm not saying those other things aren't important. I'm just saying, understand good, better, best. Understand where to allocate your time the most. And understand delayed gratification and understand the value of that and understand, you know, that we get way too high when things are, are good, right? And it's like, I'm going to poor and poor, I'm retired, this is great. And then all of a sudden someone good quits your team. Oh, I mean, this is just not, I'm not cut out. I just don't have any time. I mean, think about it. How would one person impact your, your mood? And that will tell you right now, if you signed up somebody that you knew last year made a million dollars in traditional business and they said, I'm doing this full time. It's okay to be excited. I'm just saying, how would it affect you? And how would it affect you if that same person that you thought was gonna make it where you're retired, right? If they quit your business a month from now. That, that a lot tells you how much you've recruited yourself, how much you're focused, right, on, on just other people and, and you're not truly marrying the process and divorce the results. Just challenge yourself with some of these thoughts as you're going in to this new year and, and you're really committing. And so one of the things that I would challenge all of you to do, which I know a lot of you have, is get an accountability partner or buddy. And that's number one. And I know a lot of you have them. Find someone, I don't care if it's upline, downline, sideline, cross line, I don't really care who. Text that person every single 
night. Now I'm gonna say do that for the next week. If you wanna go next level, do it for a month. And if you wanna to go to a whole new level, then do it for the next year. I never went a day where I didn't do that during my business. I did it every single day in my business, every single day. And so I would have that accountability partner where you text what you did and didn't do. I'm not even gonna tell you what goals to set. Just by having an accountability appointment, there are studies that say your, your success is up to, and some studies say higher than 96% when you have a specific accountability point. I'm not even talking about the goals, but just the fact that you know, like I'm in a report and I don't want to report a zero and I did nothing. Just the fact knowing that you're going to have that will make a huge difference. And so for every single one of you, my challenge is, I don't care who, you can even have three of you if you need in a group, but don't go a night this week. Start with a week and then you can transition into a month and hopefully forever. I never missed. This is one of the biggest things that helped me out is I always report what my results were. And just knowing that alone, I promise you, it'll make a huge difference in your business. So that, that would be just my challenge that I would issue for all of you is we want to take what we're learning now and say, okay, how do we just kick 2019 right in the butt and smash it? And that's something that, that I, I literally didn't miss. I, I never, ever missed. And usually it would be a couple times a day, but I never missed. I would always have that accountability every single day. And it just made such a huge difference. I love that. Well, I want to thank you so much for spending the last 32 minutes with us. Um, I am so grateful and I know all of those watching are grateful and all of those that are going to see this in the future are going to learn so much because I have notes, I have sticky notes, I have to do notes, I have all that. And that's the thing, um, being a student always and learning from every single person, whether it's, I learn so much from new people joining my business. I learn so much from them. And so just guys, just become a student. And the biggest thing that I can say is I take what I learn and I throw it into action. I test it, I tweak it, and I master it. And so I'm excited to get an accountability partner, one of you guys. Um, I'd love to you know, do some stuff with you guys. So Rob, thank you so much for spending some time with us and I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. Until the next time, let's go crush 2019. Let's do it. See you guys.